Hello guys, Ingemar here. With the help of my assistant Tor, we're going to give you some useful hints and tips regarding your Grenadier. Uh, the experience I have after my now 12,000 kilometers with the car. First, we talk about the nuisance warnings you have during the first startups. Uh, number one, we have been promised, I have been promised as well, that there will be a software update within the next few weeks that should get rid of most of them, hopefully all of them. My personal trick is to give the car some time. Uh, when you switch on the ignition, stop there for two or three seconds, uh, the computer goes to some self-tests and if you start then you get rid of 90% of the messages already. What's coming up, I mentioned it already in the previous uh, videos, we have the telltale speaker malfunction, that means you don't have the sounds for the PDC or the indicator if you select them, and uh, sometimes the e-call error. Uh, I've had the transmission error, but only until you start moving, then that is gone as well, and uh, that's basically it with me. Um, so again, ignition on, Step, stop there for a few seconds, give the car some time, start the ignition, and most of the issues are gone. And it's getting better over time. So in the beginning, first few weeks, I had more issues. Now, basically, most of it is gone. And if you have the telltale speaker, one thing, one more thing, if you have the telltale speaker malfunction at the subsequent engine, engine start, the message is gone and everything works again fine. If you have opted for the integrated winch, um, well, what's to say? First of all, the rope comes just with a loop at the end. If you need a hook, you have to get one or maybe use it from your previous car. Second, I measured the length of the rope. It's 10.5 meters to the red mark. So you probably need an extension. I have one already. So that's something to think about if you go for the winch. Another interesting feature of the car is the car wash mode. Um, how that works? Normally, the transmission always jumps back into park the moment you turn off the car. To avoid that, Ineos came up with a solution. So, if you stop, step on the brake, go into neutral, and then switch off the engine and turn the ignition back on right away. Now the ignition, or sorry, now the transmission stays in neutral and you can move the car around for car washing or something else. You could use the winch without the engine running. Many people, including myself, want to modify the car. We want to add compressors, we want to add auxiliary heating and so on. There's plenty, plenty of options. So of course we need spots where to mount those items. Um, let's start with the engine compartment. There's not too much space left. I've identified two positions in here. One is next to the uh, washing fluid uh, container. There's a little bit of free space and the next one is slightly further to the back next to the brake cylinder there is a little area as well and i can see a mounting plate there too um, the next two empty spots i found are underneath the driver and the passenger seat we've talked about those already i use it now to store all kind of stuff um, morning wests and so on on the other side there is the um, the tool bag, which is provided by Eneos. Um, this one is roughly 20 centimeters wide, 10 centimeters high, 30 centimeters deep. And on the other side, they have slightly more space. Again, 20 wide, 10 high, and 40 centimeters deep. So you can think about putting stuff in there, maybe even a small compressor fits in there. I'm not sure what I'm going to do. I probably opt for a portable, so I can use it on the different cars but there is some space to fix all kinds of stuff. Next is here underneath the back seat. I flipped it open already. Of course, 
we have the fuse box or one of the fuse boxes here, battery number one, battery number two, if you went for both batteries, of course. Um, next to the smart pass, to the battery management system, there is an empty space. It's roughly 20 by 20 and 10 centimeters high. I've seen a company already providing a solar power management unit, also from SeaTech. It's the D25 250 SE, which fits here perfectly. So you can integrate a solar panel, for example. And there's one more empty space, slightly bigger, again, 20 by 20 centimeters and 20 centimeters deep next to the second battery. So there is still an option to mount something. Another thing I really, really like about the car is that you have plenty, plenty of possibilities to mount things with the utility belt uh, up here on the roof with all the rings and hooks all spread out all over the car. And of course, also the recovery rings on all the four corners. Um, it's great to mount your cargo, to fix your cargo, to secure your cargo. And we use it in a slightly different way to keep our precious tour secure in the cargo area. He obviously loves it being hooked up. So we just use the installed rings, a carbine, and that's it. He is safe and he's not hunting deers up here on the mountains and in the woods. Don't look like that, you love it. Huh? Talking about the car compartment. Two things, first of all, modifications. Um, I am getting a drawer system. It will be a custom made. I want to have an 80 centimeter high drawer system installed, which matches exactly the height of the folded seats. More about that in the next videos. If you're planning on doing something like that, Leave it in the comments. I'm interested about your ideas. Same goes for the roof. I'm customizing a roof rack. One of the next videos will feature that as well. And uh, yeah, it's going to be something quite interesting. Let me know about your ideas. Uh, another thing, uh, there's plenty, plenty of nice little tools, hooks, stretches, whatever, uh, using the airline fitting. And I really love those. Those are provided by Ineos. They're super nice, flexible. You just slide them in and you can mount whatever you want here on those rails, wherever you want, of course, on the utility belt on the outside as well. And as I said, there's already plenty, plenty of options out there on the market with really nice and handy tools. The second thing here in the cargo compartment, um, I realized over the last 12,000 kilometers, that the bottle jack in there is not perfectly mounted. Let's put it that way. After a while, it creates rattling noises when going off-road and I found an easy fix. I think there is two solutions to the problem. Either you put some foam behind it or you do it the easy way because I'm lazy and haven't figured out or got the foam yet. You just Or you could just extend the little screw you see here on the top to the maximum, leave it like that, and then just pump it up until it reaches the top, rattle free. That's my easy, simple solution for the rattling bottle jack. Oh, that was today's episode with hints and tips and tricks regarding Loki, regarding the Grenadier. I hope you found some useful content in this video as well. If you liked it, please subscribe. And please also leave your ideas about modifications and customizing the Grenadier in the comment sections. I'm really, really interested what you are thinking about that. Thank you. See you next time.